Hey everybody, it's Chris, and I have had a lot of um, questions about what is needed to start acrylic paint pouring. So I have compiled a pile, really, of things that, um, that you'll need to kind of begin this art. And some of these things are extras. Um, some of these things are just fun things to have. Um, you'll find that once you get started on this, you will accumulate more things and you'll see things that other people have used and think, wow, that's really cool. I think I need that. So this by no means is a fraction of what I have. <laughs> um, it is, I will tell you that it is an expensive thing to get started in, um, but you can spend as little or as much as you want. Um, I, when I first started, I just kind of chose colors of paints that I liked and kind of went from there. So now I have quite the collection. But um, I'm just gonna kind of go over some of the basics of what you do need to get started on. Um, the first thing is a surface to paint on. And so I've got albums. Um, when I pour on albums, I actually put whole patch filler. Actually, I tape the back of it. So I just put a little bit of scotch tape on that hole. And then I put hole filler on it and I lightly sand it just so that it's even. You can use it as a piece of art. But the other thing that I like to do is to make clocks with them. So by drilling a hole after you've uh, poured it, this one actually has resin on it. I actually have a video of how to pour a clock, but this is a really cool thing to do with albums. Records are super cheap. You can buy them for probably a quarter a piece at thrift stores, or you may even have some sitting around, but it's a really inexpensive surface to pour on and to play with. Um, the other thing that you can buy are um, tiles. This is just a four by four ceramic tile. I always tape the backs of them because I turn these into coasters. So this is a coaster that I've done. Um, once again, poured it and then put resin on it. And then I just put little felt pads on the backs to protect the surface. But um, this is a really fun way to start painting. It's a small surface, so it's not quite as intimidating. I would suggest when you're first starting is to buy some cheap bulk canvases at Michael's. So these come in a multi-pack. You can buy um, different sizes. This one is an eight by 10. I think they are like 10 or 12 to a pack and you can buy them for like $10. So they're super cheap. They're just back stapled, so they're not fancy. Um, this is a 16 by 20, once again, back stapled. But this is how I started to paint. I just bought um, cheaper canvases because I did not want to invest in a really expensive canvas if I was going to ruin it. And then I also will use these cheaper canvases um, this was a test pour that I did for a countertop for my uh, studio bathroom. So I'll use these little cheap canvases just to try something out if I am not sure what I want to do. So I, I think I poured four or five of these just to try some colors of what I thought would be cool in my on my bathroom counter. And then once you have like moved on to the next level, then you can buy the back stapled canvas or the gallery wrapped canvas. And this is what I like to pour on. I actually like the thicker profile canvases, um, but I like the ones that do not show staples on the backside. Like, I think that this is fine to practice on, but I wouldn't sell a piece of art that has that on it personally. You can do whatever you like. I just feel like I want the professional style canvases. So this is a back stapled gallery wrapped canvas, which just means that it is wrapped down into the frame so that you don't see all of these staples. So you can kind of see the difference. Okay, so there's your surfaces to pour on. Another thing that you can pour on are wooden letters or wooden shapes. This is a letter that I have done. Um, again, it has been painted, and I apologize, it's not cleaned up on the back, but this is just a wood letter that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. And then I poured on the letter, and then once I was finished, it did get a resin finish on it. You will need paint. Paints are in all forms. Um, the one that I recommend is the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. Let me pull this up here a little bit closer. This comes in a lot of different colors. I just buy, I kind of stick with the black and the white, but these are usually my base colors for my negative space pores. Um, they are also, I also use them when I add any white or black to my pores as well. Um, you can usually get some pretty good effects from it. Sometimes they'll cause they'll create cells on their own. Um, it's an inexpensive paint, but it's a really easy paint to start with, I think, um, because you don't have to try to figure out how 
how much stuff to add to it to make it thinner as you do, for example, like house paint. Um, I purchased these house paint samples from um, Home Depot. This one happens to be gray. This was 50 cents. Um, so this is another great way to get started too because it's inexpensive. Um, and then I also have the Soho Artist Loft. This is from Jerry's Artorama. Once you get going, um, this is a, an inexpensive way to buy it. It's a lot cheaper if you buy the tubs versus the tubes. I also buy Artist Loft from Michaels. These are tubes of paint. Amsterdam is another brand that you can buy in a tube. You can also buy Master's Touch from Hobby Lobby. This is Liquitex Basics. Um, this is just a bigger size of tube. And then you can also buy the little bottles of paint too. Um, the Deco Art Americana usually will give you some cell action. And then the Folk Art, um, you know, you're not gonna get as much cells as you will with the Deco Art. There's something about something in this particular paint that causes more reaction than just the Folk Art does. And then um, there's also metallic colors that you can pour in with your paintings. So it's kind of whatever you wanna do. My suggestion is go buy some colors that you really love and that really speak to you and start that way. The next thing is a pouring medium. So a pouring medium is just something that you can add to your paint. Um, the, it kind of helps to condition the paint and it also um, can create cells for you. I do have a video that I'm going to put the link in the description of this video. And I kind of did a test on just using Floetrol as pouring medium. This is how I started. You can buy a gallon of um, the Flood Floetrol. Let me show you a little bit close up of it. You can buy a gallon of this for like $13 at Menards, Home Depot, or Lowe's. That's where I purchase it here locally. Um, and this is how I started to paint. I mixed my paint with Floetrol and then added a little bit of water to consistency. And you know what, it works. And you'll see from the video that I did that I actually got better cells with the Floetrol than I did using some of the other stuff. So. Another thing that you can use is glue all, um, glue all with water. So I did not have good success with this, but I know some people do. My favorite thing to use is my pouring medium recipe. And it is four cups of Floetrol, a cup of glue all, a half a cup of Liquitex pouring medium is the one that I use. This happens to be deco art pouring medium, which I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. Honestly, there's not a huge difference in what I could see in the results of it. So um, I just kind of go with the Liquitex pouring medium because I like how it works. But back to my recipe, four cups of Floetrol, one cup of glue all, a half a cup of the Liquitex pouring medium or the deco art pouring medium, and a quarter cup of water. And I pre-mix that and have that all ready to go to mix in with my paints. Whenever I use Floetrol, I always strain it. So this is another handy little tool to have. It's just a little strainer. You always want to strain the Floetrol. Shake it really well, strain it when you measure it out um, because it does get little chunks um, in the bottle. So I always make sure that I strain it. So that is the different pouring mediums that you can use. You can also just do water and paint. It's all in what you want to do and what type of effects you want to achieve. Uh, let's see, you also need cups. Um, a lot of pours, you pour your paint into a cup and then pour it onto your surface that you're painting on. So I just buy seven ounce. I have actually a lot of different sizes depending on what I do. I have five, seven, nine, I have 16 ounce cups, 12 ounce cups. The other thing that I like to use are Dixie cups. These are just five ounce cups but I'll use these a lot of times just to raise the surface of my painting or when I do coasters, um, I'll set a tile on top of a Dixie cup to keep it up off the surface. And these are really inexpensive. You can buy a box of 100 for just a couple bucks. At the Dollar Tree here in Iowa, they sell these little shot cups and these are actually a dollar for 24 and they're just a little clear cup these work perfectly to set a canvas up off of a surface just to keep the, so the paint can run off of the sides. You always wanna make sure that your surface is covered. Um, I use garbage bags or the other thing I do, sometimes I'll just buy these little cheap tablecloths. These are a dollar from the Dollar Tree as well. But a lot of times I just use garbage bags. Make sure your surface is covered. Raise your canvas, your album, whatever you're painting on up off the surface when you pour and that way the paint will run down off the sides. 
Uh, let's see, you want paper towels, you need gloves. Um, I have a little spritz bottle here because sometimes the canvases are not as tight as I want them to be. So I'll spritz the back and just kind of wipe them down. And then when they dry, they're super tight. Another fun thing to have is an offset spatula. You can get this in an art supply area of a craft store. This is really nice because then you can pick paint up off of the surface to touch up the sides. Another thing that's nice is the um, treadmill lubricant. Sometimes you can use that silicone to create cells. And I also use the WD-40 in my cups and I just spritz it, wipe it with a paper towel and that kind of helps release the paint from the cup, kind of like Pam. And then another thing you'll need are tongue depressors or craft sticks um, to mix your paint. And let's see, what am I forgetting? Oh, these are kind of the fun things. So a torch, um, I started with a little culinary torch, but I don't like to refill it all the time. So then I bought kind of the Mac Daddy of torches. So this is a top that goes on cans of butane fuel. All I have to do is just screw it on there and then I'm good to go. You don't have to have a torch, but it does help to pop air bubbles in your paint and it also helps to create effects. So then the last thing I wanted to show you, I do have a video on how to mix paint. This is how I keep my paints. I keep them in these little condiment bottles. So this is an empty bottle. I purchased these at Walmart for a dollar. And then I just keep my paint all mixed up and ready to go. So once I get my paint mixed up, I pour it in my condiment bottle, I put a label on it, and then I'm good to go to paint. So I think that that is everything that you could possibly need and even a few things that you might want, but you don't have to have. So I hope that this has answered all of your questions. If not, please leave a comment and I will be happy to answer your questions. Like I said, I'm going to put a link to that video on the different pouring mediums that I tried. I also, another thing you can do too, is just the pouring medium with paint and a little bit of water. But I will tell you the biggest factor in this particular art form is the consistency of your paint. If your paint is too thick, it's not going to cooperate with you. If it's too thin, it will turn to mud. So all I can say is I encourage you to continue to try and to figure out if it's not what you want it to be, please, please, please keep trying until you get it where you need it because I would almost guarantee that it's probably the consistency of your paint is the biggest factor in this particular art form. All right, so hopefully that has answered all of your questions. If not, please leave me a comment and I'll be happy to address that for you. Uh, please like and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications so that you'll know when I've posted something new. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.